All right, this is the Challenger I'm going to take for a ride, and, and I'm here with. My name is Vargas from I Motorsport here on St. Pete. It's the India Motorcycle Shop here in St. Pete. And what are you going to tell me about this motorcycle? Well, I'm just going to show you a, a few features on how to wake the bike up and all that good stuff. So okay. first of all, if you want to wake the bike up, you got two options. You can click on this bottom right here. My favorite one is clicking here. You click once, the bike's going to do its thing. It's going to wake up. And uh, on this side over here, you're going to have your cruise control. You're going to have your uh, your adjustable windscreen control. On the left side, you're gonna find your volume rocker for the speakers and uh, and over here so you can browse through the menu and all that stuff too. So to completely turn the bike on, you're gonna click only once. It's gonna fire right up. You're gonna give it a few minutes for it to warm up. And uh, in here, it's gonna give you a few options. Uh, you got like different power modes. Uh, you're gonna go ahead and bring that Indian logo just like that. You got rain, standard and score mode. Let's, let's shut it off so the people can hear you. Okay. Okay. So if you want to go through your riding modes, all you got to do is bring the Indian logo down. You go through rain, standard and sport. Of course, you have the option to turn on and off the traction control. You can click sport if you want to have fun with it. And uh, other than that, uh, you can go ahead and connect your phone if you want to connect your phone to it. I don't really know if you want to do that today. You can go ahead and use the radio. You have multiple screens in here that you can choose from, like tire pressure, you know, all the stuff. Right. And uh, for some reason, if you want to open the gas tank, you got to click in here on this bottom right here. I don't know if you can show them. I see that. Yep. Right there. You can click on it. Just make it a click. That way you can go ahead and open the gas tank on the bike. And uh, other than that, man, the, the rest of the thing is uh, pretty straightforward. It's a V-twin water cool, about 122 horsepower and about 128 foot-pounds of torque. Now, if uh, somebody were to buy this bike, will you buff it out for them? So uh, absolutely. Oh, no. We clean these bikes. Uh, no, no. I'm minute. kidding. Uh, it's because you know, it's a dull finish. <laughs> no, no, no. But on this one, though, this one, yeah, it's a, it's a dark horse version. It's the matte white. Uh, very clean. All right. So. I, I like the, you know, usually the, the, the air-cooled motors look uh, much better than water-cooled, but they did do a good job. In fact, I'm glad that they didn't add the, the phony fins like the Japanese manufacturers used to do on all their water-cooled bikes. They wanted to make people think it wasn't water-cooled, but the, the motor looks pretty good for a, for a water-cooled yeah. motor. And it, and it flows real, real good with mm. the whole bike, too. And if you can see here, you have Brembo brakes, top-of-the-line brakes, you know. Uh, now, does this, this particular one have the cornering ABS? Yes, yes. Uh, you have all of those uh, except the base model. The base model doesn't have That's the only one. Yeah. But I noticed no crash guards. And the limited comes with the crash guards. That's a limited option. Of course, you can add it to it like, you know. Can uh, you get crash guards front and rear? Uh, you can, I see them on front, I haven't seen them on the rear yet. Mm -hmm. uh, but you can definitely get that. This, this one has the factory pipes. Uh, I seen them with the Reinhardts. It gives it a, a real mm -hmm. uh, good sound to it. Now, if you if you add or change the pipes or the air filter, etc., do you have to have a different tune? Uh, I recommend, yeah, to do a different tune. But if you're going to use put a slip on and just air, you can run it like that. But I recommend it to get it with a tune. I always do that to my bikes, so, you know, that's one thing that I do myself. And that wouldn't void the warranty as long as you did it here at the dealership? Oh, right. Yeah, now, suppose, you here, you could. suppose you did it someplace else. If you do it on your garage or whatnot, yeah. it, it completely voids the warranty. So I see. Keep that in mind. All right, and I'm getting ready to go for a ride. I'm going to get my gear, and then uh, it's a nice day here in Florida. It's probably about 65 degrees, so it should be a good day for a ride. Well, all right then, YouTubers. I'm finally taking the Challenger for a ride. Yeah, first thing I notice, a nice low seat height. Very easy clutch, and it's still a cable clutch, which I like because you can adjust it any way you want. I'm going to be in sport mode, but I notice right away in sport mode, even in sport mode, that uh, the throttle response is a little lacking. Plenty of power, all kinds of torque. Now my own personal bike is a Harley FLHTP, that's an electric live police bike. It's got the 114 motor and it's got a tune on it and uh, exhaust, cold air filter. But it, uh, I could already tell it doesn't have the power that this bike has.
keep looking for the heel shifter and it's not there. I prefer the heel shifters and I guess it's an option on this bike. Very smooth motor. I mean, you could feel that it's a V-twin, no question about that, but very little vibration getting through to the, the grips. And of course, being a V-twin, the vibrations are low frequency. I'm looking for the signal signal lights here don't see them but I guess I should stop and figure that out all right that's the radio there we go there's the signal lights and press in to cancel all right now I'm good to go Transmission shifts nice, nice and smooth. I'd say it's a bit smoother than my Harley. In other words, less clunk when you put it into gear. Turn in feels really nice. According to Indian specs, it's got a 32 degree lean angle, that means Lean it over about 32 degrees before the hard part starts touching the ground. I do notice on this bike there are, there are no crash guards. Yeah, and that means if it tips over, yeah, it's going to cost you some money. Now the uh, the other model they have an upgraded model from this that, that according to the salesman does come with front crash guards. He's not sure about rear crash guards, but actually on a big bike like this you need both for best protection in case of a tip over oh man it's got a lot of power this bike is equipped with ABS cornering ABS I don't know what they call it but the idea of that is you can use your brakes even when the bike is leaned over computer senses the lean angle and regardless of how much pressure you put on the brake according our ABS doesn't uh, allow the wheels to slip out so you won't low slide in a in a turn if you had to apply the brakes of course as the bike comes to a stop you still must straighten up the motorcycle otherwise you know it's going to tip over uh, throttle response is excellent as you roll it along, it's just at idle. It doesn't offer the same response as I would get on my Harley. I'm gonna raise up that windshield. That is a nice feature. Now all the way up, I'm just barely looking over it. Put it back down again, because I'd rather look way over it at least a couple of inches over there that's better now I'm in fourth gear we're going 40 miles an hour and it picks right up it's got all kinds of torque all kinds of power no question about it These bikes are, of course, for long distance touring. And that's where they're at their best, but I don't care what kind of riding you do, you're gonna be riding in uh, traffic areas and 
you should know how well the bike handles under these conditions and that's why I'm taking it through city traffic and lights and starts and stops yeah I notice I can move this throttle quite a bit before there's any kind of reaction and there may be a reason why Indian does that because I've noticed that on all of their models to get out onto uh, the interstate here is I-275 and I just came that way and there's oh I guess a crash on the road is uh, all kinds of bumper to bumper traffic so I'm going to avoid that stock exhaust sounds nice and throaty that power I like the riding position I'm I'm a 57 and it fits me just perfectly I might want to have the handlebars just a little bit closer to me maybe some risers would bring it back just a bit but I mean it's not a big deal that's it's really just nitpicking Now, if you're, uh, you know, over six foot or six foot four, uh, I, I, you might be just a bit cramped. And I'm sure they either have a seat that pushes you back a little bit further, or if, if they don't have it, they're going to have it pretty soon because well, Polaris tends to, like most manufacturers, they listen to their customers. And if their customers say, hey, I'm a tall guy, I need a I need to change my riding position. I'm sure they'll accommodate them with an aftermarket seat or an accessory. fast motorcycle I mean it's not scary fast but for a 900 pound motorcycle it's got all kinds of power I think if you wanted more power than this well you should have got a sport bike but a sport bike is not going to give you this kind of comfort the ride is excellent a lot of suspension travel on Indian motorcycles and this one is no exception that's the main thing I believe they have above over and above Harley Davidson's is I think it's four and a half inches of travel in the back and boy you really need that especially when you load the bike down with gear and put a passenger on on a Harley if you do that and especially if you got the street glide with the one inch shorter shocks you feel every bump and they they bottom out quite frequently with them when the bike is loaded up or even if you got a you know a 250 pound rider According to what the salesman told me, this the motor on this bike was originally developed. They were going to put it on Victory motorcycles back in uh, if they had a two, 2018 model. Of course, Victory went out of business in 2017, and they adopted this motor for this particular bike. And this is uh, from from what the salesman is telling me is a different frame than the, the other Indian motorcycles. But I notice on their specs, I think I think the wheelbase is 66 or 65 inches. So you got plenty of stretch out room. Now, it's a pretty cool day, but I could tell you stop there. I do feel the heat from the motor, even though this is a uh, this is a water cooled motor. I can feel the heat coming from it. So I would imagine if it's, uh, you know, six months of the year here in Florida, we get 90 degrees every single day. 
the fact that this is water cooled is not going to keep you that much cooler because if, if I could feel the heat when it's 65 or 70 degrees out, you're going to feel it just like you do on an air cooled bike. Of course, you, you, you have to keep in mind you're sitting right on top of a motor. I guess that's what they call it a motorcycle. Not much room here in the parking lot, but I'm going to Let's try some low speed maneuvers. A lot of sand here and potholes. I don't want to scrape the floorboards on this, it's a brand new bike. Yeah, I'd say it's got a, you know, it's definitely maneuverable if you know the proper techniques. If you don't, well, no bike is maneuverable. There was a slight scrape. Yes, the lean angle is definitely adequate. Now, when I'm doing this type of riding, I would say, yeah, I would definitely want a handlebar rises to pull those bars back a little bit to give me some more leverage. If you were 5'10 or over, yeah, it wouldn't be a problem. But for me, I like to have as much, as much leverage and control as possible. Very nice. I, I, very powerful. I especially like the nice ride. I mean, it's these roads around here aren't the best in Florida, yeah. but but boy, you 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 could feel this bike. It's it barely notices the bumps. Yeah, it has a Fox uh, suspension, rear shock suspension. The same one they use in the freaking side by sides and razors. Oh no, kidding. Yeah. And it's is this air shocks in the back on these? No, no it's, a, it's an adjustable for, uh, shock. Mm -hmm. So you 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 would have to take the bags off to do that? Uh, no, uh, you come over here and do it. It's like pound. And do it through that side. I see. And are these bags easily removable? Like for you, when you want to clean the bike? They, I mean, you can. You see how? You oh yes. Yeah. Right. All right. So I, the best way to compare bikes is uh, ride them back to back, and that's what I'm doing. That's why I'm back on my uh, electric glide. While the Challenger has a frame-mounted fairing, to be honest, I paid no attention whatsoever to that. If you're looking down at the ground in front of your fairing to see if it's moving, you're, you're looking in the wrong place. And I, I noticed, even on the Harleys versus Road Glide versus this bike with the Batwing fairing, I, I never paid any attention to, like I said, what's going on right in front of the bike. I'm not looking down this way. so. I got my head and eyes up, so I noticed no difference there with the frame-mounted fairing. I do notice that on the both the Indian and the Harley Road Glide with the frame-mounted fairings, everything is further out in front of you. In other words, you're sitting further back from the gauges, etc. And that's true on both of those bikes. As far as riding position, uh, seat comfort, I'd say it's about equal uh, on the uh, the Harley. Road Glide, it's, uh, it comes with a pretty comfortable seat, and, and I can say the same about the, the Indian. Uh, as far as the, the, the gadgets that they come with, uh, the touch screen and all of that, uh, I really don't use those things. Uh, my wife's Ultra, she has that, and uh, on the, that's a, a 2017 Ultra, and it is, uh, it, there is a learning curve for sure to use all that equipment, and I really pay no pay no attention to that. that's why I like the police electric lights because they come with with nothing and I just added a radio so I could listen to music occasionally so putting that aside as far as 
performance getting on this bike after getting on that bike yeah this is a the 114 motor there's no question that the the challenger is got quite a bit more power throughout the rev range if that means a lot to you having the most uh, power available yeah then your choice might be the challenger and, and we take a take a look at styling think about that for a moment that's so subjective they're both very good looking motorcycles I personally give the edge to the Harley I like the the rounded shapes a little bit better than the sort of blocky type styling of the Indian of the Challenger anyway um, both of them are pretty close as far as money $28,000 $29,000 I wouldn't spend $28,000, $29,000 on either bike, to be honest with you. When I bought my wife's Ultra, it was a, a year and a half old. I think I paid $17,000 for it, and the original MSRP was like twenty-five dollars for that bike. I wouldn't pay twenty-five dollars for it, but I, I found one a year old with 4,000 miles for $17,000, and uh, you know, that's the way to do it, to save some money. I buy these the, the police bikes because they come with the bigger motor. They now come with the uh, ABS, RDRS, the, in other words, the cornering ABS, which is a good thing to have. And uh, I paid less than twenty thousand for this twenty twenty. Uh, again, that's because I, I didn't feel that uh, I needed all the uh, the nav systems and the, the fancy radios and all that but you know, you, you know you may look at it a different way but both bikes i think have uh, are pretty much equal in, the, in that category on gadgets the uh, indian does give you an adjustable windshield and it adjusts up and down i don't know about about two inches or so to me that's not a deal breaker in any way i just buy the windshield that fits me perfectly in this case this this windshield from uh, the freedom shield and uh, you know 100 bucks the, the stock shield that comes with the police bike is way too high so i got this and it works great it's nice and wide blocks the wind very well as far as uh, blocking the wind uh, i'm going to compare the the challenger the indian challenger to the batwing fairing i'd say pretty much the same i think on the road glide from the uh, it's been a while since i rode a road, road glide on the road but i remember they did not block as as much wind as the batwing fairing so i would say then it doesn't block as much wind as the frame mounted fairing on the challenger both from fine motorcycles obviously be, with the more suspension travel on the challenger it rode quite a bit softer that's something to, to consider if you're going to be in you know not the best of road conditions or even if you're taking a ride across country you're going to have all kinds of road conditions and yeah the challenger is going to be the, the softer ride for sure as far as high speed handling well i don't know anybody who pushes their motorcycle uh, this type of bike up to 100 150 miles or 110 miles an hour to find out how well it takes a curve at those speeds but uh, you know if, if that's your thing as well and you want to try that well go ahead but uh out on the public roads you know where you're going uh, out on the highway 70 80 85 miles an hour probably about the, the limit I think both bikes would be equal at those speeds as far as uh, maneuverability at low speeds uh, I think the Harley is superior in that category shorter wheelbase just is much more maneuverable than the Challenger at low speeds. As I said, this bike will turn in about 15 and a half feet versus about 18 feet would be the limit on the uh, Indian Challenger and any of the Indian touring bikes, as a matter of fact. So I would give the edge in low speed handling to the Harley and high speed handling. Yeah, it'd be so close as to, uh, I don't know, get dangerous to try to test that to see which one is better. At least I wouldn't do it on a public road. On a racetrack, it'd probably be a good place to figure that out, which handles better at 100 miles an hour. But that's not uh, something I've got available to me. And again, you know, I, I, personal opinion, I, I, I wouldn't spend that kind of money on any motorcycle. 
But if you're going to spend $28,000, $29,000, 30000 on a motorcycle, the best advice I have for you is ride both. Take them on as long a ride as they'll, they'll allow you to do, and then make your choice. I also personally have to consider that the nearest dealer to me here, where I live, was where I went today, was it's 60 miles away, and it is an absolute miserable ride down there. Nothing but traffic, just terrible ride. So, for sure, I wouldn't buy an Indian you know, if I had to go and service it 60 miles away. Now, I do know that uh, at least the Harley Davidson, the Harley Davidson dealership here in town, and the one where I bought this bike from in Leesburg, any service they come with the trailer, pick up your bike. When it's the service is over, they bring it home to you. I don't know if Indian has that same policy, uh, but it is a great thing. And also, there are so many more Harley Davidson dealerships than Indian dealerships. So. If you're out on the road and you need service, well, that's something also to consider. I can't attest to reliability on the Indians. Um, I, you know, if you look on YouTube, some of the people who've had them have complained about rusting and a bike shutting off. Uh, I guess there was a recall on that, and they finally figured out it had to do with the fuse. But you know, you're going to find problems on on any mechanical device that you buy. So to say one is better than the other. Uh, you, you know, or, or more or less reliable. I, I guess it just depends on that, the bike that you happen to get. Maybe you got one on who's made on a Friday, or maybe you got one who's made on a, a Wednesday afternoon. But you know, that's that's a tough thing to say. For my needs, my personal needs, this bike fits me better. In that, about 93% of the people that come to my class are riding Harley Davidsons, and they like to see the techniques performed on Harley Davidson motorcycle. Probably about one to two percent are on Indians, and in that case, if they have any question, I get on their their motorcycle and I ride it through the course and show them that it's just technique, it's not the motorcycle. And yes, the Indian is uh, is a little bit more difficult at low speeds because of the longer wheelbase, and also on Indians, I've I've seen in my class if they tip over. Their bank sensor doesn't go off. That means if the bike tips over, the engine's gonna keep running. If it's in gear, the bike is gonna take off and make a big circle scraping it along the ground. And that's something else I should mention. That bike for 28 grand does not come with crash guards. Uh, I'm really surprised about that. They said the limited model comes with them. And also, no tour pack is available at this time, which I think is, uh, is, a, is a mistake. I I'm betting they'll come out with a, a tour pack option real soon though. So. To end this, I, all I can say is, you know, ride both bikes, see what your priorities are, and uh, make your decision. I can't make it for you. I just know for my purposes, I'm going to stick to the Harley for now. It does everything I want it to do. I don't find it underpowered in the least. It's not all the power I ever need. And yes, the Challenger is faster, but, you know, if, if speed is the, the main thing for you, then get the Challenger. If uh, availability of service and, and the nearest dealership, well, they get the Harley, but they're both fine motorcycles. Can't fault any of them, either of them, and uh, the rest is, is up to you. Till next time.